right, guys. So I decided to come out here this morning to see, uh, check some basic things with this uh, CL600 to see if I can get it to start. Now, the battery is uh, dead. It's not strong enough to hold a charge to be able to, to um, operate the functions or to activate the functions. So I had to put a little charging uh, box on it just to give it enough boost uh, to allow me to try to diagnose a couple things. So the first thing I did is I went to the starter. Oh, I'm considering the starter. And so I went to the starter relay, which is this green one right here. I have a couple of those, so I swapped them out, nothing. Then I decided to, based on a video that I saw last night on YouTube, try to figure out if the signal is even going to the relay. And if my information is correct, this purple wire right here and this plug is the uh, source or the 12 volts that goes to the starter relay. So if there is no voltage present when you turn the key to the full turn attempting to start the car, if there's no voltage there present at that purple connection, uh, that purple wire, then you're not even receiving a signal to start. And so that's what's going on. I put my voltmeter right there. I put the positive lead, I wedged it down into there, which is easy to do. You'll catch a connection down there. And then the negative or the ground, I just ran off of just this right here, just wedged it in between here so that it contacted the top of that strut. And so that's grounded. Keep in mind that when you're looking for a ground, anything that is uh, touching or connected to that chassis uh, is grounded. So you can use that as a negative source. Uh, let's see. So that did not, well, it showed me that it was not seeing a, receiving a signal when I turned the key. So that would be possibly indicative that the EIS, for whatever reason, the ignition control module is not telling the car to start. So now I have to figure out why. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking, guys. Hmm. <laughs> uh, back to the books. Okay, guys, I am not sure if this is dangerous. I mean, I'm sure it's dangerous. Anytime you're dealing with car electronics, it's dangerous. You're dealing with 12 volts. You're dealing with the possibility of blowing something that's super expensive to replace. You're risking frying electronics. So it's always dangerous whenever you start tapping into uh, voltage and grounds on a car. <sighs> Especially with these Mercedes because of the modules are so complicated and complex. But anyways, I've been reading forums about, you know, these cars and why they won't start. This is, again, the 2005 CL600 and having an issue with it not starting. So when I put the key into the ignition, everything lights up. I have full control over the shifter. It shifts from a uh, park all the way down to drive, neutral, whatever, no problem. I'm hearing that click when I hit the brake pedal, um, which releases the shifter. Uh, let's see, so everything works when I put the key into the ignition, but when I turn to start it, nothing, not even a click, right? So I've been reading forums about bypassing the relay, the starter relay, because typically you would say, okay, the starter relay is, is not is not working possibly. That's a consideration. So you can bypass the starter relay by tapping, by running a jumper wire from 30 to 87. Now I did this right here on the right side. This is 30. This left side is 87. 30 is always hot when you put the key in the ignition. Um, from from what I'm seeing with mine, it is only receiving voltage when I put the key in the ignition. Oh, that's this. I got scared for a second. Woo! All right, so um, in that in that way, I was trying to see if my starter is bad too. I was trying to see if I was able to start this car uh, because when you put the, when you jump those cable uh, those. Um, let me see. Let me show you. This is the starter relay, the green one. This is what was in place right there. So if you look at the back of here, you can see the numbers. You see the identifying terminals. This right here is 30 when it's inside because it sits like this. Okay. So this is 30, this is 87. When you jump these two, you're bypassing this relay and you're giving it voltage. When I put the key in the ignition to try to start it, what happens is the starter will activate. Thankfully, the starter is good. I hear it trying to start but the car still won't 
start, but the starter does turn over. Well, the starter does engage. And you hear it trying to crank the car, um, but the car still will not start. So that tells me something. Again, I'm trying to narrow down why the car won't start. And if it's not the relay, I bypass the relay and it still doesn't start. The starter does activate, so it's not the starter. So it's just process of elimination. I'm trying to make sure I don't have to replace this difficult to replace starter because the starter is very difficult to replace on the 600. Very difficult. So I know I have a good starter because it definitely was cranking. All right, guys. So I'm trying to diagnose why the CL600 will not start. This is the 05, the twin turbo V12. And I received this car because it won't start. So I got it for dirt cheap. And the previous owner has tried so many things to try to get it to start. But this is one thing that he didn't look at. He didn't recognize. He never messed around with. I already went into the passenger side footwell. And I put a voltmeter on there to see if there's continuity. I can, I can say that right. Continuity. Between this large cable that comes directly from the battery. And those smaller cables, which connect up to different modules. One of them being a starter. And there is voltage there. That means the fuse up under this plastic cover, the fuses are still good. I think it's the 60 amp fuse that's relevant to or relative to the starter. So I did not remove that cover, but I did make sure that voltage is present at the starter connection, which is, I believe, I think the black one. Not the white one, I think it's the black one. But either way, there's voltage present at both. I can't remember. It might be the white one. I'm gonna just say the black one for now. But anyways, there is voltage present. But this right here, this device here is the one that was throwing me off and I couldn't figure out what it was. So I put it on the Facebook groups asking everyone, what is that? Now, it's the LoJack theft um, recovery device. Now, some of these were designed where it would immobilize the system and you couldn't start the car. Some of them are not. Some of them are simply tracking devices. I have to figure out what I have. And I have to figure out if this is causing an issue. The owner probably put about 5,000 miles on it before the original owner had it. And for whatever reason, it's no longer starting. He came home one day, parked the car, next day it wouldn't start. So I have to figure out now why. So I have to figure out what this device is connected to. I see how it's receiving power, but what are these cables? What is this line right here connecting to? Does that run to the starter relay? If I simply disconnect power to it, might it work? Might the car start? If this cable is uh, breaking or like a switch for the starter relay, do I simply splice those together? jump it basically bypass this device right here i don't know let's see okay so i discovered that this is simply a power wire ground wire and a signal wire this would be like the antenna should i say that's it simple device nothing special this does not have the immobilizer connection Whatever version this is, is not the issue. <laughs> it's not causing the vehicle to not start. So of course I disconnected that. There's no point in having that in your car if it's not activated or utilized. I'm pissed though, because I was hoping that that was the solution to why this car won't start. Nope. Nope. Oh. This is what the car is doing. Let me show you. Not a click, not a nothing. Dang it. Well, of course the car is low. The ABC is low because it's, it's settled over the uh, last year. Like I said, this car has been sitting for a year, not able to start. 
And so turning the key, I don't even hear a click up front. I don't even hear the starter clicking. Kinda sound like a click, hold on. Wait a minute. That sounds like a click, man. Hmm. I have to see if the starter is receiving voltage. Earlier I couldn't even get a click. I can't I couldn't hear anything. I didn't hear a click or anything. Hold on, let me try it one more time. That sounds like a click. Dang, why this thing just needs a starter? Hmm. Oh, wow. Check this out, guys. I got it running. I got the 2005 CL600 up and running. I'm going to give a huge shout out to someone online, actually on Facebook Marketplace, who has become a good friend of mine who lives here in Ohio, in Mason, Ohio. He knows these cars inside and out, and he suggested to me what fuse to check. Yes, guys, it was a fuse, a fuse. And this box right here, not this fuse box, but this box, let me show you. Right here. This last 20 amp fuse, this one right here, was blown. Yes, that fuse was blown, preventing this car from starting. I replaced that fuse right there, and it's good to go, baby. Started right up. Started right up. Wow. <laughs> now you know how happy I am. My goodness. My goodness. Sometimes it's the simple things. It just takes diligent effort and also communication with other people who are smarter than you, and you can solve most problems you have to be humble enough to realize that you don't know all the answers but you also have to be smart enough to find those who are smarter than you thank you so much thank you so much and actually i have to add to what i just said there was another gentleman on facebook that actually pointed to this exact issue now the guy who is local his name is josh crowder he uh suggested a couple of things for me to check and it was process of elimination and i appreciate his help and he's probably gonna come by here at some point and also point me in some other directions in regards to some other questions that I have about these V12s. Uh, but this individual who helped me, it's gonna be hard for me to pronounce his name. Give me a second. His name is Wakbesh Drabuki. Now, I tore that name up because obviously the, the name is not in English. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. You know what? Let me just add a screenshot, uh, a picture uh, of this individual. <laughs> Yes, he specifically pointed me to that fuse. He told me to check those because that would prevent the car from starting. And that's exactly what it was, a 20 amp fuse that blew. So his suggestion combined with uh, the other gentleman's uh, uh, suggestions led to the so, uh, solving of this issue. So my car starts. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Okay, so now I'm driving it. Well, I just got finished driving it. And I'm noticing, okay, yes, the check engine light is on. It could have just been a fault that existed because of the situation. It not starting, me going through different sequences to try to get it to start. You know, it could have been something like that, but it's not. Uh, as I was driving it, I noticed that it doesn't have a lot of power. It takes a long time for it to get up to speed. And I immediately realized, like, wait a minute now, I have a 5.5 with the same horsepower stock when it was stock as this 600, as this V12, uh, the 493. That's the same as the stock compressor 5.5. And so immediately I realized that this thing is not as powerful as it should be. Even the 5.0 liter, the, the, the 500s, the SL500, the CL500. Uh, has more response and more power than what this currently has. So I know that that's abnormal. So I hooked up my scanner to it, the iCar uh, Soft MV2 scanner, and I'm getting these fault codes. Now this is referring to a misfire, which sounds about right, because there is a slight little rumble, a slight vibration, very slight. It being the V12, it should be very smooth. It should not even feel like it's turned off. So I'm getting these codes, which is this fire right there, cylinder 7, 11, 9, 12, 8, 10. All right, so what's causing a misfire? Now that's what I have to solve. Uh, is it coil packs, which means I have to uh, swap out one whole side, you know, six coil packs per side, um, or is it something else that's causing a misfire? This is what I have to find out. So now I have to research V12s, the misfires, and see what it is.